Hello, folks. Have your attention. Um, my name is um, Greg Yakovosky, and I'm a project analyst with the Certificate of Need section. And what's going to happen is I'm going to make some opening remarks and kind of lay out what's going to happen. Public hearings going to be run, and um, after I'm done with those introductions, if anybody has any questions, you just ask me quick, and then we'll kind of go through the public hearing. Anyway, so my name is, is Greg. Uh, today is May 15th, and the time is now 12.30, 12.31. And we're here in Franklin today to conduct a public hearing on two competing proposals to develop a dialysis facility in Macon County. The two applicants are Biomedical Applications of North Carolina, Inc., DBA, FMC, Macon County, uh, to develop a, set, a new seven-station dialysis facility in Franklin, Macon County. That's our project ID number A-8795-12. The second project is Total Renal Care of North Carolina LLC, DBA, Macon County Dialysis. Also developed a seven-station dialysis facility in Franklin, Macon County. Again, our project ID number A-8799-12. I'm going to briefly go over some of the ground rules that we have to go by for our public hearings. The process is that each applicant will be given a maximum of 15 minutes to briefly describe the major components of its proposal and respond to any written comments submitted to the CON section during the 30-day public comment period. An applicant shall not use videos, PowerPoint presentations, or any other form of electronic media to make their presentation. The applicant should have prepared the presentation in written form to be handed to the project analyst immediately following the oral presentation. The written response may be more detailed than the oral presentation. After the applicants have presented their responses to the written comments, any person who is not an employee of one of the applicants will be given the opportunity to make a three to five minute statement about their concerns or comments regarding the applications under review. Employees of the applicants or other persons representing the applicants such as consultants, may speak only during the applicant's 15-minute oral presentation. Members of the public who wish to speak will be asked to indicate which proposal they support, if any, and provide their name and address on the sign-up sheet, which is, uh, we have some already up here, but they're located in the back, right at the door is a good-looking young guy back there, who's more than happy to help sign you up. <laughs> Can everybody hear me okay? Am I talking loud enough? Um, <coughs> the sign-up sheets will be shuffled and names called at random, alternating between supporters and, and, and opponents of the proposals. Further, it is not permissible for one person to read a letter written by another person into the record of the public hearing. Only those persons who are in attendance at the public hearing may comment on the applications. A speaker, <coughs> excuse me, a speaker may provide a transcript of his or her oral, argument, excuse me, oral remarks made the public at the hearing. Following the public comments, each applicant will, be get, will have another chance to talk, five minutes each, to respond to public comments made during the public hearing. Today's hearing proceedings are being recorded. If you're speaking, you might see me walk up to the um, podium right in the middle here. I'm just going to check to make sure that little red light's still on, that's all. So please don't let me disturb you. And before beginning your comments, if you can remember, please state your name for the record, uh, just so we have that. Does anybody have any questions at all? Jim. Greg, I'd like to know if we could um, turn and speak to the audience. I speak to you frequently. I know Mr. Hyland speaks to you. You're recording this. But we have a lot of people here. And, and I, I would actually like to speak to the folks that are here as well as to uh, the city of section. I understand that. But general policy is to address myself just to speak in a, town, in a, in a tone firm enough or loud enough so that the folks out there can hear you kind of kind of the way I run them. Um, if, again, I'll just reiterate to folks, especially in the back, if there's any trouble at all hearing the folks speaking, please just let me know. And we'll, we'll correct that if that's an issue here. Uh, absolutely have to turn around. So maybe it might be starting at 90 degrees. I'd like to keep it coming this way. It's just kind of a lot of reasons for it. Maybe else have any questions? And the way, uh, what's going to happen, folks, is, is that, again, the two applicants, one's BMA and one's total renal care. And BMA is going to go first. The way we pick that is when folks send their applications in, 
They're assigned a project number, and to keep it easy, we just pick whoever signed in first goes first. Our, so that's going to be BMA. And again, all folks, uh, when you speak, if you're able, um, come up to the uh, microphone. If that's not going to work for any reason, you can easily make accommodations. One, uh, 15 minutes whenever you're ready. Whenever you're ready. You're copy time. Get that? Thank you very much. One, one more question before we start. Yes, sir. I have a pre presentation to give, but I do not have it written. Is that Folks, okay? anybody, if you have, if you remember the public and would like to make any comments and they're not written, that is not a problem at all. Okay. It's just if you have them, we'll take them. If you don't have them written. Come up, speak your piece, no big, no problem at all. Thank you. Thank you for asking the question. Anybody else? Thank you very much. I appreciate everybody being here today. Mr. Swan. Good afternoon. My name is Jim Swan. I'm here on behalf of Biomedical Applications of North America. Oh, oh, Biomedical. Oh, you call it again, hang on, Greg. Absolutely. Good afternoon. I'm Jim Swan. I'm here on behalf of Fresenius Medical Care in North America doing business as biomedical applications in North Carolina. BMA for short, we're the leading provider of dialysis services in North Carolina and we currently serve about half the patients uh, in our state. I'm joined today by Jim Wichard, uh, who's a Fresenius Medical Care Director of Operations and Jim will have oversight for our facility here in uh, Macon County should we be awarded the certificate of need. We want to talk about our proposal to develop a new seven-station dialysis facility to serve the ESRD patient population of Macon County. The uh, January 2012 semi-annual dialysis report identified a seven-station adjusted need determination for the county. The uh, adjusted need determination was a direct result of a petition by Macon County. And in response to this need determination, BMA filed a certificate of need to develop the facility here. Before going further, let me acknowledge a couple of points. I'm not going to tell you that Mr. Highland or DeVita Dialysis is a bad company. I want to tell you that we both meet the same federal standards for provision of dialysis services. I will tell you I found fault with their CON application, and I filed comments with Mr. Yakubowski in the certificate of need section. And those faults are identified within my public written comments. <coughs> Um, and they are specific to each individual review criteria that I found fault with. One of the primary things I found fault with was their uh, definition or identification of the patient population to be served. And I don't want anyone here to think that I'm saying or the Presenius is saying there are not patients in, dial uh, in Macon County, because clearly there are. But Mr. Holland and I have a high level of uh, achievement to, to reach to define that population. And I don't think that Mr. Hyland reached that level within his CON application. And that's a pro problem for Mr. Yakubowski to determine as he does his review. For those of you who are in attendance here today, I thank you. This is probably one of the most heavily attended public hearings I've been to in the last eight years that Mr. Holland and I have been opposing each other in hearings like this. Um, I thank Mr. Beal and the county leadership because without the petition, we wouldn't be here and there wouldn't be an opportunity. This process will ultimately result in a new dialysis facility to serve the patients of this area. Mr. Holland is gonna have an opportunity to speak about the DeVita proposal, much like I'm gonna talk about the BMA. Um, and I'll tell you that we're both very strong advocates for our corporations and for the applications which we've prepared. We're both going to say things which may not seem to have a lot of relevance to the people sitting in the chairs today, but they are specific to review criteria. Again, that goes back to a problem for Mr. Yakubowski to determine. Mr. Yakubowski, as you're conducting the review, I want to urge you to look closely with an eye to the specific review criteria and rules. Don't be misguided by some of the rhetoric within the public comments. 
And finally, in a departure from my normal course of public hearings of this nature, I want to spend a few minutes talking to Mr. Beal and, and the county leadership regarding their comments. Our facility is going to uh, include traditional in-center dialysis. We're going to offer home dialysis for both home hemodialysis and home peritoneal dialysis patients. And it's important to note that we are the only provider with an application today that is offering home hemodialysis. It's interesting to note that the cornerstone of the foundational message in the petition which led to this adjusted need determination was that Macon dialysis patients, Macon County dialysis patients, uh, shouldn't have to leave the county and go to Silva or elsewhere for dialysis. We certainly agree with that. And we've ensured that all dialysis patients would have an opportunity to receive dialysis treatment at our proposed new facility. Contrast that with the DeVita proposal. And sadly, DeVita ignored the home hemo patient population and suggested those folks would have to go back to, or continue going to Silva. Home hemo, at the last report, there was only one patient in the county doing home hemodialysis. But think about home hemodialysis within the context of what's happening in the dialysis industry and the dialysis world. Several years ago, there were only 50 patients or less in our state doing home hemodialysis. In 2007, there were only 59. At the end of 2011, there were 272. So in the last four fiscal years, this population has increased by 360%. We want to ensure that the folks in Macon County have an opportunity to join that growth in home hemodialysis and be freed from their three weekly visits to the dialysis facility. And folks that may not want to do peritoneal dialysis can do home hemo. Further support for inclusion of our home hemo piece in our application is uh, tied to our choice of medical director. There's been some discussion about the medical director coming all the way from Charlotte. Well, our medical director, Dr. George Hart, is aligned with Metroline and Nephrology. Uh, according to Mr. Holland, one of the largest or ESRD providers in our country. And for years, Metrolina had one of the largest home hemo patient populations in North Carolina. In fact, one of their facilities served 25% of the patients statewide until this boom in home hemo. A single facility took care of 25% of the patients in North Carolina. But let me talk about our medical directors. I'm not going to disagree that it's more than 180 miles from here to Charlotte, and it's not an easy 180 miles. But what is a medical director supposed to do? Lead, guide, direct the delivery of care, and foster growth of all modalities, offering all patients new choices. The medical director is not going to be in the facility every day, and distance is not an issue. The same physician practice that's proposed by DeVita as their medical director also provide medical director services at nine dialysis facilities serving Western North Carolina, stretching from Murphy to Spruce Pine and over to Marion. Mountain Kidney includes nine, for, nine nephrologists. Metrolina nephrology includes 24 nephrologists. And while Metrolina does stretch from Anson County to Gaston County, They've got more docs to do it with. Is it really any further from Anson or, or from uh, Murphy to Spruce Pine than it is from Charlotte to here? I don't think so. Aside from the medical director, there seems to be some question about who's going to refer patients to the BMA facility in Macon County. It is not uncommon, Mr. Yakubowski, for folks in North Carolina, for nephrologists in North Carolina, to refer patients to both a Fresenius or BMA facility and a DeVita facility. I would suggest that you consider the Wake Forest facility in Wake County, just a few miles from your office. That's a DeVita facility. It has medical director coming out of uh, Burlington, stretching across three counties, and the nephrologists that are putting patients into that facility are actually from Wake Nephrology, which is a practice aligned with Fresenius or BMA. So this would be no different. We certainly want to make sure that the Mountain Kidney uh, nephrologists know that our facility will have 
their door, the doors open, and we invite those nephrologists to consider seeking privileges. I don't think that the Mountain Kitty docs are going to abandon the patients of Macon County. Both applicants want to offer seven stations. We're both going to meet the same guidelines. What distinguishes BMA from DeVita? Choice of medical director. We propose to offer home hemo as a part of the package. I want you to also consider that BMA does not do reuse. Every patient who comes to our facility is given a new dialyzer at every treatment. Mr. Beal, we spoke about that when I came and met with you several months ago. But Mr. Hyland may tell you that their patients have a choice. But reuse, while it's a choice in the DeVita facilities, they are heavily uh, utilizing the reuse process. Very few patients in their facilities. So what percentage of DeVita patients are reusing dialyzers? I want to spend a couple minutes now talking about the letter from Macon County. The county weighed in with regard to continuity of care, Mr. Beal. I've already addressed the physician component, but you know we don't really think that the physicians are going to abandon their patients. In his public written comments about our application, Mr. Hyland suggested that Mountain Kidney would abandon their patients. I've not seen that happen in more than eight years of doing dialysis work. If such is the case, if the Mountain Kidney docs are going to abandon the patients, if we are the uh, award of the certificate of need, I'd like for them to stand up today and tell these folks that they're not going to have docs. To the extent that there's currently some DeVita staff residing in Macon <laughs> County and working in Silva, we're not opposed to those staff uh, applying for employment with our facility. The face certainly has a lot to do with it. The person providing your dialysis care every day is important to you. I say the same thing about some of our EMA applications. But at the end of the day, what's really important is the quality of care and how that care is delivered. We're both meeting the same minimum standards. You gotta look for those things that distinguish my company from his company. Continuity of care is important, Mr. Deal. But every time a patient transfers, there is a very, very extensive patient medical record that is transferred as well. If a patient leaves Macon County and goes to Myrtle Beach for the week, on vacation with their family. We've got facilities at Myrtle Beach, and I know that there is a transfer of medical information. And it's a different face, it's a different provider. But the continuity of care is not really lost. Let me assure you, it's not going to be compromised. The name on the name tag may be different, but the hands providing the care are gonna be equally as responsive to the patients of this county as they are anywhere else that we serve. DeVita shouldn't be given an advantage because they were supportive of the adjusted need determination petition. My office has been in contact with a, a family member here in Macon County for more than a year. I personally sent copies of other previous, previously successful petitions for adjusted need determinations to this family member. That family member then took them to the county and the county did with them what they will. But I know that Fresenius was a part of this and has not been standing on the sideline just watching for the last year or so or more as Macon County worked with the Beaver. We're both doing the same thing. We approach it differently, but we're doing the same thing. Counties question our application due to a lack of local experience. And I respectfully want to remind the county that we are the leading provider of dialysis services in the state. We didn't get there by offering poor service. We're currently caring for more than 6,000 dialysis patients statewide. Let me ask this county, how does the uh, exclusion of, ho of home hemodialysis by DeVita or the inclusion of home hemodialysis by us not enhance the patient quality of life? If we're going to offer a service, let's offer it. Let's offer every patient that same quality. I was looking at something on the web recently, and I noted that the Macon County Economic Development Commission webpage encourages you to discover the benefits of opening a business in Macon County. 
surely Macon County is not saying, well, we only want a DeVita business. I don't think that's the case. I think Macon County wants business. When I read the petition, it didn't say we only want DeVita or we only want Fresenius. It said we want an opportunity to have a facility to that possibly. That's what we're about. We're here competing with DeVita. In writing to a seemingly opposed development by Fresenius or BMA, the county suggested quality of care could be compromised because BMA staff uh, weren't currently working in this area. We, just like DeVita, have been constrained by a CON law. We haven't had an opportunity. At the first opportunity, we're here knocking on the door saying, we want to bring our services, we want to put our staff, we want to put our training, we want to put single-use dialyzers, we want to put home hemodialysis in Macon County. We've committed to branding each one of our facilities as an, uh, with Ultra Care. That's our quality label. Uh, it's not just a name. It is a certification that each facility and the staff of that facility have to undergo on an annual basis. <clears throat> we are serious about providing quality care. I don't want to belabor this anymore. We're here about seven stations, just like the Vita. I think we've got a great package in front of you, Mr. Yakubowski, to the folks in this room. We didn't get here just by reading the mail and saying, well, let's go apply. We got here because we've been providing dialysis services. We take care of folks on a regular basis, just like this one. We do it a little bit differently. And from my way of thinking, I think we do it a little bit better. I respect Mr. Highland for saying his company does a little bit better. If he said anything less, I'd be really surprised. Um, but you've got the applications. It's in your hands. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Folks, just a uh, aside. If you see me looking at my phone, that's how I keep the time for the proceedings, so I'm not I'm a little self-conscious about that. <laughs> I figured I would take a second to let everybody know that. <laughs> Jimmy, you're all done. Um, well, we'll have a wrap up. I'm finished. Mr. Highland, total record. Good afternoon, my name is Jim Sawyer. I'm the Regional Operations Director serving Western North Carolina for DeVita, Inc. DeVita is the 100% owner of Total Renal Care, Inc. and 85% owner of Total Renal Care of North Carolina, LLC. We provide hemodialysis services, home training and follow-up services to end-stage renal disease, ESRD, patients at 63 facilities in North Carolina. DeVita caregivers work closely with the medical director and admitting nephrologists to provide optimal care for our patients. In fact, DeVita has delivered patient outcomes well above national standards in terms of key dialysis metrics. Total Renal Care of North Carolina doing business as Macon County Dialysis has submitted a certificate of need application to develop a seven station end stage renal disease facility <coughs> in Macon County. This certificate of need application is based on information included in the January 2012 semi-annual dialysis report, Table 14A, Dialysis Station Adjusted Need Determination. We have indicated in our application that we plan to secure certification to conduct home training services for patients re uh, referred for home peritoneal dialysis training and follow-up. Many of the DeVita teammates have been serving <coughs> Macon County ESRD patients at the Silva Dialysis Center uh, we'll, they will transfer to the Macon County facility. The teammates at the Silva Dialysis Center have a total of 119 years experience working with ESRD patients, and many of those fine teammates are, are here with us today. But 119 years experience working with ESRD patients. 25 residents and community leaders who live in Macon County have su submitted letters of support for the TRC application. 28 Macon County residents with ESRD who are receiving treatments at the Silva Dialysis Center submitted letters of support for the TRC application. Thank you. 20 Macon County residents who have been diagnosed with chronic kidney disease 
submitted letters of support for the TRC application. We included in our application a letter of intent from RHGC Investments, LLC, that states they will secure property in Macon County. Once the lease is signed with RHGC Investments, TRC will hire a contractor to upfit the dialysis center in an existing building shell. Two excellent sites with existing buildings to house the proposed 5,440 square foot facility have been identified. You will find in our application how we will expand healthcare services to the medically underserved also. We have indicated that the facility will make dialysis services available to all patients without qualification as they pertain to race, sex, age, and handicap regardless of ethnic and socioeconomic status. We have projected that over 92% of the patients that will be serving uh, will rely on Medicare, Medicaid, or VA funding for their dialysis treatments. You will also find in our application how we encourage healthcare services through our DaVita Quality Index Initiative and our overall <coughs> quality management program. We have indicated in our application that we will have the facility completed and prepared for a certification survey by July 1, 2013. We have provided to the Certificate of Needs section a reasonable timeline for the development of this project. The 10 nephrologists associated with Mountain Kidney Associates in Asheville have signed letters of support for this application, including Dr. Bryson Fleming. Dr. Fleming has agreed to serve as the medical director for Macon County Dialysis. At this time, Dr. Winfield Ward Sims will present comments on behalf of Mountain Kidney Associates. Once Dr. Ward Sims completes his comments, Bill Highland, Director of Health Public Care Planning, will present his comments. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. I'm Gwen Ward Sims. I'm one of the physicians at Mountain Kidney Hypertension Associates. I appreciate the opportunity to speak today in support of a dialysis clinic here in Franklin. Regardless of who operates that clinic, this is a good day for the citizens of this region that this life-saving technology will be offered here. I come to support DeVita's application to operate that clinic. Our practice has worked with DeVita for about 15 years to operate dialysis clinics throughout Western North Carolina. We have found them to be a company that has a corporate culture of excellence. They have been responsive to the needs of their patients and to the suggestions of their local medical directors. Our <coughs> practice, of course, has much deeper roots in this region. Our founding nephrologist, Artis Moser, was the son of a school principal in Swannanoa and the grandson of a Biltmore estate forester. When Artis returned from his medical training and set up shop in Asheville in 1970, he brought to this region a technology, dialysis quickly saved the lives of people who would surely have either died of kidney failure or been forced to move to a larger city where dialysis was available. Initially, we offered dialysis only in Asheville, but because of the mountainous terrain, we set up a home dialysis program that at one time was one of the largest in the South, offering both peritoneal dialysis and home hemodialysis. As the CON office gave approval for more dialysis facilities, we opened clinics in Silva, Hendersonville, Waynesville, Marion, Spruce Pine, Cherokee, and Murphy. We now have nearly 700 patients on dialysis in this region. The dialysis clinics work together as a cohesive whole. If a natural disaster or equipment issue shuts one clinic down, our patients can get their treatments at clinics nearby. If a charge nurse is injured or sick, we can draw a substitute from our nurses in the area. When you operate a small clinic, such as the one in Franklin will be, that's a crucial issue. Where are you going to get your backup? In each of the cities and towns where we have dialysis clinics, our physicians see people with kidney disease and hypertension who aren't on dialysis. Our hope is that by providing good care of people with chronic kidney disease, we can reduce the need for dialysis clinics. We would operate such a clinic here in Franklin and would be available for hospital consultation as well. Our practice strongly believes that an educated patient is happier and does better. We hold regular classes on kidney disease education, where nurses, doctors, and dietitians talk about issues related to kidney disease. For our patients whose kidney disease progresses to the point where they need dialysis, they will be followed by the same team of doctors that has followed them over the years. 
Our home dialysis program remains robust. Many patients will start their dialysis career with home peritoneal dialysis, then switch to hemodialysis if they aren't getting adequate clearance from PD. It works the other way as well, with some patients running out of vascular options for hemo and switching to peritoneal dialysis. We currently have home dialysis nurses working <coughs> with both Asheville and Silva. To sum up, our practice has provided nephrology care to this region for more than 40 years. We expect to continue providing such care regardless of who operates the clinic in Franklin. We support the Vita's application to run the clinic because we have found them an excellent partner to work with. Thank you for your consideration. Good afternoon. My name is Bill Highland. I serve as Director of Health Care Planning for Vita Incorporated and Total Rental Care of North Carolina, LLC. Macon County Dialysis is projected to have at least 23 in-center renal and <laughs> end-stage renal disease patients dialyzing in the facility by the end of operating year one. The basis for our projected patient census at the end of operating year one uh, begins with a number of assumptions that I will not go over at this time. Total Renal Care of North Carolina presents a detailed methodology of patient growth in the proposed Macon County Dialysis CON application. We look forward to your review of our application issuance of the required state agency findings and the conditional approval of the certificate of need application to develop Macon County dialysis that will bring Macon County up to the, the dialysis provider that has been serving these patients uh, since 1995. At this time, I will present rebuttal comments to the public written comments submitted on behalf of Fresenius Medical Care by Jim Swan, Director of Market Development and Certificate of Need, related to our Macon County dialysis seal and application. Uh, I will provide response to some of the points made by Mr. Swan. Mr. Swan indicates that TRC failed to appropriately address the issue of providing home hemodialysis and support at our proposed facility in Franklin. There is no law, statute, or rule that states any new facility developed in a county without a dialysis facility must offer home hemodialysis training and support. We indicated in our application where the home hemodialysis training and follow-up services would be provided. Bio applications of North Carolina Incorporated, DBA, FMC, Franklin County submitted the Certificate of Need application on March 15, 2012 to establish a 10-station dialysis facility in Lewisburg in Franklin County. In that application, the applicant states, home hemodialysis patients will be referred to BMA Raleigh. Fresenius is not currently operating in center facility in Franklin County. Fresenius Medical Care operates in 30 counties in North Carolina where they are the only provider of dialysis services. Fifteen of those counties, they do not offer any type of home therapies. In two of those counties, they operate two dialysis facilities with no type of home training services. And in one other county, they operate three dialysis facilities with no type of home training services. The FMC Macon County application indicates that they will use one of the seven stations to offer home hemodialysis. However, the applicant states in their methodology that they will be serving only one home hemodialysis home hemodialysis patient during the first two years of operation. Basically, the provider's taking away one in-center station to serve one projected home hemo patient. Mr. Swan does not like our methodology in arriving at the number of patients we propose to serve. He wants us to use his methodology. There is no law, statute, or rule that indicates the provider can use a certain methodology. The methodologies used in the TRC application are standard methodologies that have been used for many years uh, in over the 250 applications spanning the last 13 years submitted by Vita Total Renal Care and DBA Healthcare. In comparison, FMC Macon County application utilizes a methodology that states only 90% of the inpatient population will be served. Well, which of the 10% of the patients will they turn away? They would have to turn away patients if all in-center patients were to apply for admission through yet an unnamed nephrologist or some of the patients would have to dialyze on third shift because one of the seven stations was being utilized for home hemo training. The applicant proposes no growth of the home training services during the first two years of operation. The applicant quotes a couple of paragraphs from the formal final agency decision. That decision was written by attorney Lee Whitman who, who was representing Fresenius in a legal matter. The agency director at the time simply adopted Mr. Whitman's version of an agency decision. Again, these comments are no part of any law, statute, or rule. Mr. Swan 
indicates that we state in our application that we will hire all new teammates for the facility three months prior to the projected opening date, and that's a quote, hire all new. We state on page 31, quote, the proposed facility administrator and other teammates live in Macon County and will transfer to the new facility. One important factor that the Macon County ESRD patients have stated numerous times is that continuity of care is important to them. They want the same nephrologists and teammates providing their care, end of quote. We indicate on page 45 of the application the names of the unit administrator, dietitian, nurse responsible for nursing service, and social worker. We state on page 52 of the application, quote, we will hire all new teammates for the facility three months prior to the projected facility opening date. There is nothing inconsistent with these three statements. Several of the current teammates are projected to transfer, including the, the facility administrator, social worker, dietitian, and charge nurse. Any new teammates will be hired three months prior to the projected opening of the facility. Let's compare that to what FNC stated in their application. They plan to offer R one RN position to cover 60 hours a week, which requires 1.5 RN positions. They are planning to hire 2.5 patient care technicians positions to cover <coughs> 180 hours a week, three patient care technicians on duty 60 hours a week, which requires 4.5 positions. The application states on page 63, quote, it is expected that all positions will be new employees, end of quote. The application further states uh, on an unnumbered page, each, quote, each new employee will be required to successfully complete an eight-week training program, end of quote. They don't say where the training will take place. To recap, they will be short-staffed, hire all new employees, and will train them for eight weeks in an undetermined location. <coughs> then will they be ready to put patients on dialysis? Uh, my time is just about up. Let me just make one more point. I just want to talk, uh, Mr. Swan did provide a comparative analysis uh, in his uh, comments about our application, and I want to go ahead and just do one before uh, I have my rebuttal time. Certificate of Authority, TRC, includes in its, includes a Certificate of Authority from the North Carolina Department of Secretary of State for Total Renal Care and Corporate. <coughs> TRC includes a Certificate of Authorization from the North Carolina Department of Secretary of State for Total Renal Care of North Carolina LLC. FMC includes a Certificate of Authority from the North Carolina Department of Secretary of State for Biomedical Applications of Fayetteville Incorporated. There is no citation in their application that indicates any relationship between Biomedical Applications of Fayetteville Incorporated and Biomedical Applications of North Carolina Incorporated. At this time, uh, I will turn uh, the chair back over to you, sir. Thank you, Bob. Check the almighty recorder. Sure still going there. At this time, what I'm going to start doing is um, we have the sign-up sheets for speaking from the public. And again, if anybody has arrived after the start of the scene, you did not hear me. If you're here and would like to speak during the public comment period, in the back, there's um, a sign-up sheet. Please feel free just to uh, sign up and we'll call you. I'm gonna kind of call the name by random, because that's what I'm, how we handle it. Um, again, please remember to uh, come up to the podium if you're able, uh, speak your name, take your name for the record, and um, about five minutes tops, if you don't mind. The, uh, again, if, anybody, if the podium doesn't work, we can make accommodations. At this time, I'm gonna start with the one name I cannot read, which is the Chief of Staff of Angel Medical. And it's, um, if you can pronounce your first name, I can't get it. Gus Wilby. Although I have to apply, I have to acknowledge to Mr. Wilby, is it Wilbur? Wilby. 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 That his handwriting is actually better than mine, so I have no comment that I can make in fairness. I can read it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, my name is. Uh, Dr. Gus Willey. I'm a family physician who's been in Franklin for 18 years and currently serving as Chief of Staff of Angel Medical Center. It's a pleasure to be here today and also to see a number of my patients here. Uh, I know this is an important day for everyone. Uh, I'll just make one comment and that is that uh, I think as most everybody in this room knows, uh, renal patients are of all the patients that we see, and I see everything as a family physician, uh, certainly the most complex patients that we deal with. Um, 
basically if it can go wrong, it generally will go wrong, and oftentimes it goes wrong in a big hurry. Uh, as an aside note, due to the complexity of the patients, uh, nephrologists are uh, well up there on the uh, hierarchy, and actually if I were a lot smarter, I probably would have been a nephrologist like Dr. Ward Sims here, but uh, as it turns out, I'm an old country doctor and, uh, and enjoy that. But the point is, uh, these are very complex patients, and oftentimes, uh, you know, they run into problems that, along with heart patients, need to be dealt with in the quickest fashion possible. Uh, currently, Asheville, our center, our tertiary center is 16 minutes by air on the helicopter and uh, less than one hour on the ground. I actually have a patient or two who has been on the uh, receiving end of one of my helicopter flights to Asheville uh, here in the room today. Uh, but when there is a problem, it's very reassuring to me that I can pick up the phone, speak with Dr. Sims or one of his colleagues in Asheville and with about three clicks on the computer, they can have that patient's entire medical record right in front of them. We can quickly make a decision, does this need, patient need to go to Asheville? If yes, ground or air, uh, and that decision is made within about five minutes. And again, they have the patient's entire record there. Uh, I would not want to be waiting around or have to fax uh, lots of records uh, on my patients in order to get that kind of an answer. And, uh, if we're talking about transferring patients to Charlotte, that really is not a viable uh, alternative. Uh, it's been a pleasure working with these guys for 15 years, and I would hope uh, that we would be able to continue that. As you know, we have many patients not only on dialysis, but with renal disease that has not progressed to that stage, all of them followed by uh, mountain kidney, and with all their records in Asheville, again, questions come up, very frequently, and it's nice to get a quick answer uh, from somebody that has complete information on their medical records at their fingertips. So, thank you for this opportunity. Thanks, sir. This time, um, David Say, S E A Y. David C. David C. As I said. <laughs> thank you. My name is David C. I'm a resident of Macon County. My mother is currently receiving treatment at the Vita Dialysis in Silver. I would like to say concerning the people that work there, they are diligent, capable, and efficient in performing their professional duties. They treat my mother with kindness, dignity, and patience. I could not ask for any better. Their facility is clean. The equipment is dependable and up to date. In short, DaVita is all that one could ask for in a medical care facility, and I think they deserve the chance to provide treatment here in Bacon County. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Gloria uh, Wright, and it could be the last name. Gloria Wright. <coughs> last name is Fun, T H U N. I'm a resident. Macon County. Uh, my mother, Gladys Hannah Wright, was on dialysis in Silva. Uh, she was on it for a year, one month, and about 10 days. And from the beginning, uh, Dr. Wilde and the doctors here felt like she needed to uh, progress over there. She was uh, told that she had diabetes. Uh, her count was very high, and this is when we found out that her kidneys were failing. Had no idea before this. Uh, went over to the facility. Uh, everyone there was just so wonderful to her. Very caring. Uh, the slightest little thing. Uh, if they questioned something, they would call us. Uh, usually one of us always stayed over there uh, and sat in the waiting room. Uh, just so that we were there in case something happened. Just ask other. Um, she's a mother of five, uh, grandmother, great grandmother. And we all took turns taking her across the mountain, which was very difficult at times. We submitted uh, some pictures and uh, 
they were caught on top of Cowie Mountain twice that they absolutely could not get across. Uh, there was a bad truck wreck uh, where we weren't able to get over. So it's a life and death situation to have to go to Silva. And we appreciated everything that everyone did over there for us. They loved Mother. They took such good care of her. We had no um, never negative thought about the DeVita and the people over there. All the physicians, everyone um, took the time to explain things to Mother and be very patient with her. Um, we totally support it. It's something that's really needed here in Franklin. And my mother fought very hard for this. She was on Ronnie Bill all the time to get it here. And in her honor that and her memory that we beg you, beg you to get it here. And and we just really want everyone else to not have to go through what our family had to go to. But uh, Davida gave us an extra year with our mother that we wouldn't have had. But it was worth it to drive back and forth. But we saw so many broke down on the side of the road when we were going or coming back that were sick going across the mountain. They couldn't even get over to Silva. So we totally support this and we ask you please to get uh, this facility here for those who are coming. Thank you. Barbara Broyba. My name is Barbara Broadwell. My husband James is in stage four kidney failure. I have written letters both times in support of the certificate of need and then in support of the certificate of need for DaVita. My husband has been a patient of Dr. Fleming's for 10 years. Certainly that relationship is one that we would not have want to have broken. You get very close to your doctors in that period of time. We have been to the DeVita facilities in both Cherokee and Silva to see the doctors. And while we are not receiving dialysis at this time, it is so apparent from the waiting rooms the love, the family, the relationships that have developed, and how wonderful everybody is treated by the people who are operating the facilities. When the gentleman mentioned so many things about his com com company, I only want to remind us that DeVita and Mountain Kidney were willing to come to Western Carolina and take care of the needs of the patients long before anybody else was in this area. If it were not for them, there would have been nothing for those of us who need this. My husband had to go to Mission Hospital in October of 2010 for a number of reasons, and one of them was related to his kidneys. Certainly, it was perfect to have the doctors that he had been seeing with Mountain Kidney available to him there. It seems only common sense and logical that the facility that would be chosen would be DaVita because they are very well aware of the needs of the people of Western Carolina. The relationships have been established with them and they are the ones that we certainly should have here. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> William Trapani. I'd like to read a statement. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Bill Trapani. I'm a resident of Franklin. I'm here representing the 200 plus members of the Macon County Veterans Political Action Committee. We strongly recommend in favor of placing a dialysis unit in Macon County. We strongly urge that the uh, unit that has been treating patients over the years in our area
be chosen. It will help the residents of our community, plus it would be a great benefit to many veterans who may need this service. Thank you for allowing me to speak on this important matter. We urge you to vote in favor of this undertaking. We need the dialysis unit now. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I didn't plan on speaking, but I am now. Uh, my mother is a patient with dialysis, and she has been for six years. And I had been taking her three times a week over the mountain to take her to the facility. And it was an early morning, dark days, snowy days, stormy days. So having a facility here in Franklin would be a great benefit. My mother does not, I do not have to take my mother now because she is in the, uh, well, Brit Haven, Macon Valley uh, Nursing and Rehab. They do take her, but there's also other patients, uh, residents from there that do go and uh, having in, in Franklin could be a great benefit to them too. And having the Vita doing it would be like having family helping because they are used to them. And uh, the Vita people are very caring, not only to their patients, but to the patients' families, which is what I appreciate it a lot. So, thank you. Thank you. William Don Provetz. How are you, Commissioner? Folks, I'm a, uh, I have chronic kidney disease. I'm in stage four. I am uh, really directing uh, my point to the uh, medical community. Uh, when I was diagnosed as a stage one uh, and very early symptoms uh, became available uh, chemical wise. Uh, I should have been connected with a dietitian for five years. I ate the wrong food and. Uh, not realizing that the food that I was eating um, was a disaster to the condition that I was uh, now in. So I, I, uh, I urge the, the VA, of which I'm a member, I urge uh, Angel, and I urge the medical community uh, to immediately uh, connect that stage one or early symptom chronic kidney disease patient uh, to a uh, renal dietitian. So that person does not continue to eat uh, the wrong food. I support Divita uh, based on the online information that, uh, uh, that I read. And uh, unfortunately, uh, I did not read this until I was <coughs> in stage four. So thank you for your time.
he's diabetic, and uh, hopefully he'll never have have diabetes. <coughs> but if he does, we would like to stay with the doctors he's been with all these years because he has been to uh, the Cherokee Clinic and the Vita Center, and also the other one to see doctors. And uh, they have a wonderful place, and we support the Vita. Thank you. My Sorry, handwriting is that bad. <laughs> My apologies. system uh, drastically. So I've been, uh, un fortunately and unfortunately as well, I've had to be under medical care most of my life. Uh, in the year 2000, I lost uh, my first kidney to cancer. In the uh, year 2004, I lost my last remaining kidney. So uh, I have no kidneys at all, and of course it is uh, so good to be able to go to Davida, but I wish they were here in Franklin. And of course, we've already established we need uh, the service here in Franklin. And uh, they have been uh, just fantastic to me at Davida. Uh, they're compassionate, they're very professional. As the gentleman mentioned uh, just previous, the uh, information you get concerning taking care of yourself, concerning uh, your, uh, nutrition, that is a big part of uh, what we undergo as far as patient education, and that is uh, yeah, so important to kidney patients, as the gentleman mentioned. Um, I need, I'm a patient who needs a uh, dialyzer every day, a different dialyzer, a new one, and uh, that has been offered to me, so I get a new dialyzer every day because of the necessity. The doctors with Mountain Kidney are fantastic. And uh, that's the most important thing, I think, in this decision is keeping the continuity of the positions that we have. Uh, these doctors are, with that exception, fantastic. I've had the uh, chance to uh, be acquainted with all the doctors, and uh, with that exception, they're, uh, they're just an outstanding group. Here in this room, there's many of the people who drive me to dialysis on a weekly basis. I have uh, 16 gentlemen who work as a team from Calvary Baptist Church and others to uh, take me to dialysis on a volunteer basis every week. They're giving up a full day of their time because when we drive all the way to Silva and back and the time involved in dialysis, it uh, fairly well constitutes a, an eight hour day. And these uh, folks have given up their time, they spend money, uh, they've even helped out with gas on occasion, and if I were paying any one of them, it would easily come to $10,000 a year, which I, of course, cannot pay them for, uh, due to having to spend so much traveling to Silva. Uh, I've already done in my retirement, and now we're working on my wife's retirement, too keep gas in the vehicle and uh, be able to travel every day. Uh, I had health problems early on that not, uh, did not allow me to use public transportation. So Calvary Church, along with my former employer, uh, made it possible for me to have a van to travel in. So uh, another thing we know, uh, we're hearing more about public transportation is going to be more regional and not as available to us in the next few years to cut costs. So uh, it's going to be all the more important for us to have our own dialysis center here in Franklin. And it's like I say, uh, the people I've dealt with in eight years now uh, have been fantastic. 
made a big difference to me in medical care. Professionalism is important, but the compassion makes the difference. Thank you. Jack Bosco up in Macon County. Thank you, sir. We're glad you're here today. Uh, there's been a lot of important public hearings in Macon County, I'm sure, over the years. Uh, none more important than this when you're at today. I stand to represent a lot of folks here today. First of all, the county commissioners, which I have a colleague president. Uh, Commissioner Haven is here today also. Uh, but I also stand to represent a lot of those folks who can't be here today. Not only those on treatment, but those who have been stage four who I've not only come to represent as a commissioner, but I've become friendly with them, and I've learned more about dialysis than I ever wanted to know. And I also stand to represent people today like Gladys Hannah Wright, who will not have the opportunity to have a wonderful dialysis center in Macon County that we're going to have. And I thank these gentlemen for being here today, two qualified companies, I'm sure. But the bottom line that I want to say today is the folks of Macon County, most of them in this room, have suffered hardship with Rewaski long enough going across this mountain to get dialysis. We need it here. They don't need another hardship of going through, having to change doctors. You've heard that here today. It's about the people. I'm sure the two companies are great and we'll work with whoever, whoever is chosen. It's about the citizens of this community and that's what we represent here today and what is best for the citizens. So I hope the Certificate of Need Committee would keep that in mind when you make your decision. But the folks you see in this room, I don't know how many people you used to have at public hearings. But you would have had more here today had they been able to get here today. Some of them are on dialysis right now. And there's more and more folks that, in this area that's, that have moved in that's going to need this care. <coughs> and we want to be able to provide that. We want to, and that's the reason. The county commissioners did send a letter out, signed by all the county commissioners, recommending to Vena. The reason for that is because the people you see in this room, because that we have talked to these folks, just like they're talking to you today. So that's the reason for our support for this. We want to do what's best for the citizens, and they said the continuity of care and the keeping of their doctors was the number one most important thing. So it is about the folks. It ain't about, it ain't about me. It's not about the county commissioners. It's not about these companies. It's about the folks that sitting back here and these families, not only the patient, but the families and what they go through. So we thank you for being here today. We would ask that you would render a decision just as soon as possible. And we would also ask gentlemen, we also know that what happens is a 30 day grace period. In that 30 day grace period, I understand that one company can appeal another company. Macon County don't need no more appeals, sir. We need to have our center up and going. So we'd ask the certificate of need make it very clear in your choice. I know there's a 30 day grace period after the choice. And uh, we just want to, we've got to provide this service. You can hear these stories about the people going over Cali Mountain, leaving at 4.30. What the lady didn't tell you is the morning that she's had to get up at 3.30 in the morning to get her folks there. So uh, there's a lot of important things going on in a lot of communities. But for the people of Macon County, right now, at this moment and today, there's no more important thing than what's going on in this room today. So please keep that in mind when you make the decision. We thank you for being here today, and we certainly thank these folks behind me, because this is what it's about. It's about the people. And please keep that in mind when you render your decision. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mr. Bill. Mickey Allen. <coughs> Um, my name is Mickey Harrison Talent, and I'm here on behalf of my grandparents, Wayne and Grace Harrison. Um, first off, I need to clarify that if there are any emotions shown while I'm standing in front of you today, it's not because I'm nervous or afraid to speak in front of people. It's just because I'm very, very passionate about the subject today. <coughs> in July 1993, my grandfather had his first dialysis. Um, while my grandparents were on vacation, his doctor would call and said, Wayne, you need to get back home as soon as possible. And once he got home, a tink off catheter was placed and he was put on a kidney transplant list. For 
the next 20 months, they did peritoneal dialysis, four exchanges a day, every day. And on March 15th, 1995, the pager went off and we had a transplant match. During the next years, he was a new man, enjoying retirement, traveling, and spending time with his friends and family. The only problem that kept lingering was the neuropathy in his feet, but that didn't keep him from the Hawaiian Islands with his grandchildren or the Arctic Circle with the love of his life and the countenance of the Jones. His quality of life changed 100-fold, and his quantity of days on this earth have been lengthened greatly due to someone that had a little red donor heart on our driver's license. In 2007, he had the first of seven surgeries on his right foot to try to save it. After the first surgery, he was sent to a local nursing facility. Things didn't go well, and my grandmother had him transferred to Emory University where his transplant surgery had been done. And they told her that my grandfather was dying of CHF. Praise God he made it. Only because she demanded that he be sent to the transplant floor in the world. In 2009, there was only one option left. Take the right leg below the knee. He never complained. And he hadn't yet. Angel Home Health made weekly trips to their home to do physical therapy, trying to get him to stand on his prosthetic leg, but he never could. So he just putters around in his little electric chair with a smile. In 2011, his creatinine clearance levels started slowly rising, and his nephrologist in Asheville suggested he go back on dialysis. The phone calls were started to see if he could be put back on a kidney transplant list with the 2007 diagnosis of CHF ruined that this time. No kidney. August 2011, another 10 call cath was placed for peritoneal dialysis. And they went back through training at DeVita. Their God sent DeVita. Same routine as 17 years before. Four exchanges a day, every day. In September, he started using the Cypher machine. Nine hours a day, but at least this could be done at night while he was asleep. Unfortunately, unbeknownst to my grandparents, the cycle was not filtering out all the impurities. And on the morning of, of October 24th, she tried to wake him and he was lethargic and unable to move. He was immediately transported to Mission Hospital in Asheville. The Tinkoff catheter was removed and there he started hemodialysis. Uh, for a week and a day, he was moved from Mission to a nursing facility in Jackson County. And there he started his three times a week with the girls, his new second family. My grandmother didn't know what to do. She wanted him home. She was torn, but she knew that there was no way that she could lift him out of the truck, lift him into the truck, lift his wheelchair into the truck, lift his wheelchair out of the truck. So until she found better means, she had to stay in the nursing facility. On Thursday, December 15th, their 60th wedding anniversary, she called and I quote, I'm bringing that man home. She found out that the wonderful folks at Macon County Transit would shuttle my grandfather back and forth across the mountain of dialysis. So the very next day, there he sat at home, like a little schoolboy with his backpack and his lunch sack waiting on the bus with a smile. For the past five months, three days a week, with not a day missed, my grandmother gets up at 4.30 a.m., makes and packs his lunch, and makes his breakfast and wakes him. Due to the neuropathy that now has taken over his hands, she feeds him, shakes him, dresses him, and has him ready for the transit bus that comes between 6.55 and 7 a.m. There are so many folks that utilize these services, Delvita Dialysis and Silva, 
which might I add is a wonderful place and darn near the closest thing you can get to family. There's a weight on chairs somewhere grandfather is gone from home almost nine hours, three days a week. And by the time he gets home, it's straight to bed due, due to sheer exhaustion. My grandmother will wake him between 6 and 6.30 p.m. and feed him his supper, then it's back to bed. When I asked him what he wanted me to, if he wanted me to say anything today, this is what he said, and I quote, be sure that they know it. It's a shame that there are so many more folks out there that need to be on dialysis, but they don't have the funds or a ride to get across the mountain. Then he looked at my grandmother and said, I would like to be able to spend more time at home while I'm still here. With the dialysis center in Franklin, he could eat lunch at home instead of a packed sandwich and then spend the rest of the day with his sweetheart instead of in bed. He has a lot of visitors he sleeps through. Maybe he won't miss that anymore. Being gone home for four hours a day, being a sick man is much easier than being gone home for nine hours a day, being a sick man. He knows he does not have much longer, longer on this earth, but trust me when I say he is not afraid of where he's going. The long trips and vacations may be over, but he gets the enjoyment of the singing birds in the backyard and the flowers blooming in the spring. Speaking for myself and on behalf of my grandparents, the rest of my family, and I'm sure for most of the people in this room, it is imperative that we expedite the implementation of the Vita Dialysis Center located in Franklin immediately. And for my, for my grandfather, right now, it is all about quality of life at this point instead of quantity of days. And he knows this. After all, he has been an end-stage renal failure before, but this time there is no hope except for the data. Thank you for your time. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Johnny Coleman, and I live here in Franklin. And I travel, I am a dialysis patient, and I travel from Franklin three times a week over to Silver to get my treatment. And uh, we do need a facility here in Franklin. Uh, as you have heard from the other people that already have spoken, that uh, at times, you know, it, this winter is, it's been good winter, this winter. But it ain't always a good winter here in Franklin. And those who get bad, they slick, and icy, and sometimes you can't get across that mountain like you need to do to get the dialysis treatment. So, you know, I strongly suggest that we do get a dialysis center here in Franklin <coughs> where the people in Macon County can get to it real easy. It's a, it's a, hard, it's a hard drive, and then you get the way to tax uh, gas prices in. You constantly <coughs> putting your vehicles up, you know, trying to get back and forth. Toward the mouth. So then our uh, diabetes is a, is a good uh, dialysis facility. They got good people working over there. I, I love all the staff, the ladies and the guys that work there. I just I just love them. I have fun with them every time I go over there. I done got used to them now. I like my doctors and stuff over there. So, you know, I would love to see the dialysis center put here in Frank. Thank you. Aren't you right here? Thank you. Thank you for the people in Franklin County and you, Mr. Neal, and others who have been assisting on suing the dialysis center here. <coughs> I'm a dialysis patient. I live in Franklin cost me at least two hours extra each way 
the times a week because of the distance. That's not the important thing. The important thing, as we have found, is center that has professional capabilities of meeting our needs. I've been on dialysis for five years. When I started, I was kind of pathetic. They brought me back to halfway reality. If I can keep on keeping on, I still try to run a business. I travel all over the country. Since I retired from government in 1988, I've been in 43 different states. I cannot do that without the professional coordination to be at the right place at the right time with the right records. But the key word to me is continuity. Through the Vita Center, we have the continuity of staff, of professional doctors, of support facilities to meet our needs. I hope you can see fit to continue that capability. Fight. Thank you. Bill Outs. speaking, but I was encouraged to uh, speak on behalf of this. Um, my interest in this is uh, I began with a group of people from right back here from Calvary Baptist Church two and a half years ago um, driving Randy Raby to uh, Silva for dialysis. Um, it's been a pleasure for us actually to do that. Now, Randy, of course, has been on dialysis much longer than that, but we stepped up to the late two and a half years ago and began helping the family out uh, by driving uh, Randy over there. Um, I also have a lot of other friends who are on dialysis that have to make that trip uh, several times a week. And I have other friends, uh, one of them sitting right back here, that may go on dialysis pretty soon. Um, so there's, there's certainly a, a big need in Macon County for a dialysis. There's no question about that. Anyone that's looked at all the facts realizes there's a definite need in Macon County. And if you've been to the dialysis center at uh, Silva, uh, when the transit buses and from the nursing home and from Macon County Transit, all that, come in, there, there's a bunch of people. I don't know the exact number from Macon County that are traveling over there for dialysis, but I know it's substantial. Um, I also know that <clears throat> Macon County uh, is, is a place where a lot of people come to retire and these people are aging. And so I, in my, uh, from my point of view, the need for a dialysis is probably going to increase over the next number of years. These gentlemen have proposed a seven station facility and I think that once this is established that in just a few years, you, uh, I, I expect to see that uh, increase uh, because of the need. Um, so I would like to speak on behalf of the Vitra, and primarily because of the treatment that I've received as one of the drivers. Uh, they have those folks over there, the staff and the nurses, have always been very, very courteous. Uh, they have been extremely nice <coughs> and very helpful in in helping me and getting Randy in and out of the facility, and uh, <coughs> never had a conflict of any kind. And also with from my conversations with Randy. Now, we talk about a whole lot of things. Randy and I go back uh, to his childhood, and uh, we talk baseball, we talk basketball, we talk about lots of things. But he also talks about the treatment that he receives. And, uh, because I always ask him, well, Randy, how did it go today? Did you run into any problems? These kinds of things. So I hear from the patient's point of view uh, about the treatment that he receives uh, there at the facility. And from I've never heard one uh, state to the contrary, but what they gave real good service, good treatment, 
and that he was very satisfied with it. Um, now, I don't know who's going to make the ultimate decision. Uh, to me, it's obvious that there's, uh, there needs to be a facility here. Uh, I would think that decision has already been made, and that we're now de determining which of these two companies to uh, uh, set up the facility. But whoever uh, uh, makes that decision, I hope that you will do it with, uh, with all these facts in mind, and not only for the present, but looking to the future. Uh, the need is certainly here, and uh, I, would, uh, I would like to see uh, the Beecher uh, get the uh, facility. Uh, another reason for that, I think Dr. Wilde pointed out a few minutes ago that uh, these renal patients uh, are, are very complex. There's a lot of issues involved. Now, I don't know <coughs> that there would be an issue in changing from one group of doctors and, and facility to another or not, but it makes sense to me that continuity would be a factor, that, that they could continue uh, with the veto. And they're already established with, with their doctors, with their, their technicians and nurses. It makes sense to me that it would be to their to the patient's advantage. Uh, and that's not to say anything against the other company, but it just makes good sense that uh, the victor would be the obvious choice. Sir, I thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Tina Corrath.
Mr. Yakubowski, to you, to the county, to the folks in this room. The first thing I want to say in closing up this is there seems to be some confusion, and I, I regret using that word, but that's what it appears, about you having to change doctors. We have indicated clearly that we will invite Mountain Kidney to pursue privileges with a Fresenius facility. So let that be known as a fact. Um, when Dr. Ward Sims spoke, he didn't say they wouldn't pursue privileges. He said there needs to be a facility here. We agree. Mr. Holland and I agree on this. Um, there needs to be a facility in this county to take care of the patients in this county. To <coughs> Mr. Trapani, uh, representing the Veterans uh, Political Action Committee, as a veteran, uh, I certainly applaud and appreciate where he is. I served our country as did Mr. Highland, and it's an honor to represent Presenius now. Um, all folks, veterans, civilians, need dialysis services at some point. Mr. Highland suggested in his comments that we somehow overlook the 10%. And as you know, Mr. Yakubowski, both of us are required to produce a methodology. And so we produced a methodology with assumptions that says, we're going to assume that 90% of the patients will come to our facility. We also said clearly within the application that we're not gonna turn any patient away. So there's not one patient that's gonna be turned away from a percentage facility in this county. It might be a home hemo patient turned away from the Davida facility or more than one home hemo patient. Mr. Beal talked about continuity of care and how important that is, and we certainly support that. So, after speaking with Mr. Witcher, who uh, manages several of our facilities from Charlotte up to Boone, um, and his staff is equally as concerned about our patients and his facilities, um, it, it's hard to come before you after listening to folks with real life stories and try to offer a sanitized application and, and exclude all the personalities and all the emotion and all of that, that's the tough part for you. But let me say something Mr. Holland has said to me before. We will not appeal your decision. I challenge Mr. Highland to say the same thing. I challenge you, Mr. Yakubowski, go along with what Mr. Beal said, produce a decision, don't take 150 days. I believe it's reasonable for you to have a decision out inside of the next 45 days, maybe by the end of June. <coughs> it's possible that this county can have a dialysis facility and have patients being treated locally by Fresenius or by DeVita, depending on your recommendation before Christmas of this year. So for Senius, will not appeal. We want you to do a fast decision. We support the county in what they've said in both a need determination. We support the county in asking you to expedite that decision, put you on the spot. And uh, we empathize with the patients and the family members of this, in this room. It's a real disease. It's a real problem. We serve patients throughout the state, across this country. We believe that we can do it here successfully. We believe that, we will, uh, that the physicians of Mountain Kidney will have the opportunity to continue seeing their patients in a BMA facility. Take quality of care is not going to be compromised. Compromised. Continuity of care is not going to be compromised. The doctors, the angel will be able to speak with the doctors in uh, Asheville and have that 30 minute or one hour right or 16 minute uh, flight time still. We're not asking folks to go to Charlotte. We just want to put a Fresenius facility here to coordinate and work with the local system that's already in place. And with that, I thank you. Mr. Beal said it best, it's all about the people. 
It's all about the people who are sitting in this room. It's all about the people in Macon County. I'd like for the teammates, including Jim Sawyer, to please stand, just to be recognized. Uh, teammates, these teammates mostly are from the uh, civil facility. There may be a couple of teammates from the uh, charity facility. I'd like for all the teammates to sit down now with the exception of Michelle Cady. I just want everybody to, uh, to see who Michelle Cave is. Uh, one of the things that I was required to do uh, a number of years ago was to uh, actually have a preceptor, a trainer, uh, work with me for two days in a clinic uh, so that I could get a feel for what it's like for the patients to be dialyzed. And so I had chosen a long time before to go to the Cherokee facility, which is a sister facility to Silva. Michelle now works at the Silva facility, and she was my preceptor. I just want to acknowledge and, and thank her for really giving me the opportunity to, to really see what it's really like for a dialysis patient to dialyze. You can have a seat now, Michelle. Michelle would like to be up here. She's never lost her words. But let me sort of get it straight as to what we're dealing with here. Uh, we have two applicants. Uh, Mr. Swan told me last fall he was not going to have his company apply. They were not going to apply. Uh, it was said you can go ahead and have it because you guys are already providing the service. At some point, uh, they apparently decided to apply. Uh, one of the things that we had to do, and they had to do, was to, to uh, find local community support. To my knowledge, Mr. Swan was in this community twice. Mr. Richard, who's your operations guy, as far as I know, based on their application, this is his first visit here. Uh, they did not hold any public meetings. We didn't need to hold public meetings because we already had patient base. We knew who the patients were. Uh, Mr. Beal worked with us on identifying chronic kidney disease patients. There are three letters in their application. They're signed by people other than Fresenius folks. That is a transplant agreement. That is Dr. Hart's letter, 182 miles away. Yet he's going to provide guidance and leadership and all that stuff from afar uh, based on the comments this morning. Uh, and there's a, a, a letter of support, not a letter of support, but a general letter indicating we need a dialysis facility by the Department of Social Services uh, director here in this county. And that's it. No community support. So now let's get it straight. Uh, we have a team of teammates that are going to transfer down here and provide services to the patients they've been providing services to for a long time. The application submitted by Fresenius, they're going to offer to hire all new employees, train them eight weeks, and expect them to start sticking the patients that we've been sticking for a number of years with teammates that have a total of 119 years of experience. Uh, they offer eight weeks of training. They don't say where that's going to happen. They don't really have any backup facilities other than if they go into Georgia. They don't really say where they, they, they talk about Angel Hospital and Mission Hospital, but provide no documentation. Our application provides all kinds of documentation. They also uh, talk about a facility. They identified two sites. They need over 6,000 square feet to put their uh, facility, uh, or to fit their facility because that's what they say in their application. Uh, the facilities that are the two buildings that they cited, one is less than 4,000 square feet, and the other one has two sites. One is 5,600 square feet, two buildings, and the other one's 4,000 square feet. So how do you get a 6,300 square foot clinic in a uh, less than 6,300 square foot space. Uh, the other thing they said they were going to do is that they were going to have six stations on the floor, one of those to be isolation, and they're going to dedicate a full station to home hemodialysis. So here you've got five stations on the floor, you've got one station for isolation and one station for uh, home hemodialysis. They think they may get one patient during the first year and they're not going to get any more patients. Uh, they indicate that they're not going to have any more patients other than one patient that first and second year in home hemodialysis. Same with peritoneal dialysis. They're only going to have three or four patients, I think is what they, they indicated in their application. What they say in their applications, look at their floor plan very closely, you'll see seven stations on the treatment floor and number eight stations sitting over here in the home hemodialysis suite. So now they've applied basically for an eight station facility rather than a saving station facility. If you go through their application with a fine tooth comb, as I did, you will find multiple, multiple errors or multiple decisions that they made in reference to how they were going to uh, 
to develop their facility in this county. They have zero patient letters of support. I think Mr. Swan may have said something about talking to a patient who, who has been in this county, but there's at least one or two patients who live in this county and go to a Fresenius clinic in Clayton, Georgia, and they, uh, they didn't even get letters of support from them. So I don't think there was a whole lot of effort put into their application. I think you'll see that when you review it. I uh, want to thank all the patients who came out today. You're the real heroes here. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. At this time, that's the uh, end of the public hearing. I also want to thank everybody in the room. I go to a lot of public hearings, not just with the uh, state of North Carolina, but before I came down here from New York, I did a lot of public hearings in the previous position. Um, I enjoy public hearings. Sometimes public hearings can be very interesting. Sometimes public hearings can be extremely boring and nobody in the room. And I want to um, thank everybody here. I, 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 I think it's just great that everybody came out today. Um, and again, I think it's, sometimes folks feel that they're uh, coming out, they want to tell if or not, I always think, I always encourage people to go to public hearings, whatever side you're on. Um, I just think it's helpful for, for everybody to come up and, and participate. So that was kind of a personal thing on my comment. So I thank you to everybody. Thank you for being here today. Thank you. Thank you.